Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do our first unit of trig. We're going to cover it all. 4, 1 to 4, 5 are the sections that we cover. Let's start off with just some basic unit circle stuff. Do you know what the trig functions are in terms of sine and cosine? So tangent, sometimes we'll write it as y over x. But if you'll remember on the unit circle, the y values are the sine. So this would be the sine of the angle over the cosine of the angle. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so 1 over sine of theta. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And if you remember cotangent as the reciprocal of tangent, then that's cosine over sine. It's x over y. So that's just some basic, do you know the trig functions? If I say verify a point is on the unit circle, you need to remember that the equation for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And on the unit circle, the radius is 1. So this needs to come out to 1. If I plug these points into my little equation, 7 over 25 squared plus 24 over 25 squared, I need to get 1. So 7 squared is 49. 25 squared is 625. 24 squared is 490. Or no, I'm sorry, 576. 576 over 625. And when you add those together, 576 and 49, that makes 630, 625. Oh, yeah, perfect. Uh, 625 over 625, which is 1. Hey, great. That means that it has to be on the unit circle because if I were to plot this point, I could say, well, somewhere in the first quadrant, we have an ordered pair. We know what the x is. It's 7 over 24. We know what the y is, and we know the hypotenuse is 1, which means this point has to be on the unit circle if I do the whole circle. Uh, how about the signs of <clears throat> each trig function in each quadrant? So first thing, in the first quadrant, everybody's happy and positive. In the first quadrant, everybody's positive. In the second quadrant, so in the second quadrant, the y's are positive, but the x's are negative. So y is sine, and also if sine is positive, then its reciprocal is positive. But x is negative and y over x, x is negative. So those are both negative, which means these are both negative. In quadrant three, sine and cosine are negative, but y over x is positive, which means these are negative and that's positive. And in quadrant four, sine is negative, which means cosecant is negative. Cosine is positive, and since you, if you divide those, you get a negative, then that's negative. So then secant would be positive and cotangent would be negative. Because secant, these guys follow the originals. Sine and cosecant are always going to have the same sign. Cosecant and secant always have the same sign. And tangent and cotangent always have the same sign. Uh, 45, 45, 90. So if this is a 45, 45, 90, that's 45. And if the hypotenuse is 1, then this is radical 2 over 2. Radical 2 over 2. 30, 60, 90. Across from 30 is 1 half. Across from 60 is radical 3 over 2. And hypotenuse is 1. These are right angles. So that's just kind of some basic triangle review stuff. Now let's see if we can put some of that stuff to use. So then we're in 4, 2. What if I give you a triangle and ask you to find all six trig ratios? First thing you need to do is you need to find this missing uh, height. So I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem. I'm doing a little bit in my head. That's the y value. So 13 squared is 169 minus 81. This comes out to 88. If you do 169 minus 81, you get your 88. So we can uh, square root that, but when you square root 88, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 11. That actually simplifies to 2 radical 22. So this is 2 radical 22. You need to simplify your radicals. And you need to make sure that they're all rationalized, all your denominators. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The sine here is 9 over 13, which means the cosecant is the reciprocal. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 2 radical 22 over 13, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, but we have to rationalize that. So give him a buddy. And you end up with 9 radical 22 over that's 22, and 22 times 2 is 44. So 9 radical 22 over 44. Now we got to flip uh, cosine to get secant. So if you flip that, you get 13 over 2 radical 22. And we got to play the same game here. So rationalize. 
and you get 13 radical 22 over 44. And the last one, if you're going to flip this, first of all, guys, work smarter, not harder. You could flip this and then rationalize it, but that's a lot of work. How about instead of opposite over adjacent, we think of cotangent as adjacent over opposite. So 2 radical 22 over 9, and that helps us do it without having to rationalize anything. We could also use these problems or do these sorts of problems, but I give you the information a different way. First thing, this is really important. This is telling me that we're in the third quadrant. So if we're in the third quadrant, we're somewhere in here. And it also tells us that cotangent, I'm going to call this theta, cotangent is one half. So adjacent over opposite is one half. The other way of saying that would be tangent is two, opposite over adjacent. Since we are in the third quadrant, these are both negative. Pythagorean theorem, 2 squared plus 1 squared is 5. That means this is radical 5. And now I can do the same thing. Opposite over hypotenuse, negative 2 over radical 5. Make sure you remember that negative because that's going to throw you off on a lot of these if you don't have the signs right. So negative 2 radical 5 over 5. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So rationalize that. And you get negative radical 5 over 5. Tangent is, they gave us cotangent, so tangent is 2, this is 1 half. Now if we flip these, again, flip it from here. Instead of thinking of it as adjacent over hypotenuse, flip it and make it hypotenuse over adjacent. You could just write that as negative radical 5 and negative radical 5 over 2. Pretty much the same game as the other problem, you just have to draw it first. Evaluate trig functions. So if it helps you to kind of sketch it and it helps me, I like to know where I'm at and then think about what I need. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Two, three, boom, boom. There we go. Okay, just to help me sketch them. So 7 pi over 6. This is so cool. This is 6 pi over 6. So that's one more than that. And sine is the y value. We're talking about a 30 degree reference angle. 30 degree reference angle is be one half. And since it's in the third quadrant, it is negative. Negative pi over 4, that means go clockwise, that puts us down here, 45 degree reference angle, cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. Uh, 2 pi over 3 puts us here, and just remember that a 60 degree reference angle, tangent is always radical 3, and since we're in the second quadrant, it is negative, because y over x is negative. Pi over 3 is right here, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so if sine is radical 3 over 2, we need to flip that. So 2 over radical 3 needs to be rationalized. That's 2 radical 3 over 3. Secant of negative 5 pi over 6, that's right there. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. If the cosine is negative radical 3 over 2, then when you flip that, we just did this, you'll get negative 2 radical 3 over 3. The same thing you flip right here. Cotangent of pi over 2. Pi over 2 is right there. Now, we got to be careful. This is 0, 1. Tangent is x over y, so 0 over 1. The cotangent of pi over 2 is 0. You actually can't type that one in your calculator because it can't do the tangent of pi over 2. Kind of interesting. Determine the sine. So, in the first quadrant, cotangent is positive, sine is positive, and cosine is positive, so that will end up being positive. In the second quadrant, cotangent is negative, but sine is positive. Cosine is negative, so negative of a negative will be a positive. In the third quadrant, cotangent is positive, sine is negative, cosine is negative. This one is also positive. I feel like these are all going to be positive. Quadrant four, cotangent is negative, sine is negative, cosine is positive. So, yep, they're all positive. Okay, that's kind of cool. You're just figuring out what the sine of each of these functions would be. And you can actually use this chart to help you if you want. Um, given that we are in the third quadrant again, so make sure you realize between pi over 2 and pi, oh, I'm sorry, second quadrant, that's in the second quadrant, and sine is 4 fifths, so opposite over hypotenuse. This is a Pythagorean triple, so that's 3 and it's negative. Cosine is negative 3 fifths, sine is positive 4 fifths, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, that's negative 4 thirds, this is going to be positive. Now we've got to multiply negative 12 over 25 plus 4 thirds. They need a common denominator, so this guy needs to be tripled, and this guy needs to be multiplied by 25. 
Now we end up with negative 36 plus 100 over 75, which is negative 64 over, I'm sorry, positive 64 over 75. 100 minus 36 is positive 64. So the answer is positive 64 over 75. If you evaluate all that, you get positive 64 over 75. So we're moving right along. Let's see if we can do a little graphing. First thing, you have a phase shift. So I like to draw this and just call this, maybe I want to draw it as a line because we have asymptotes. I'll just say we're starting here at pi over 4. From there, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 tick marks. The amplitude is 4, so 4, negative 4. And the period is normally 2 pi, but in this problem, the period is just pi. So from beginning to end, that is pi. And maybe you can do this in your head, but that means we're going to end at 5 pi over 4. We are counting by pi over 4s, actually. So if we start at 1 pi over 4, well, that's not where we start. 1 pi over 4, this is 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. I just had to reduce the fractions. Now, the cosine is supposed to start above the midline, so above the midline, then it hits the midline, then it's back down through the midline and through the top. So when you draw it, it should look something like this. Let's see how well I do. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so there's our cosine curve. You need to make sure you label your x and y axis and that you draw the right function. We started at pi over 4, so there's a phase shift, and then we had to change the period and label the x-axis accordingly. This next one, we also have a phase shift, so I'll say we're starting at pi over 2. <clears throat> the amplitude is 3, but it's going to be negative, so this is going to be an upside-down sine curve. Uh, the period is normally 2 pi, but here it's 2 pi over 3, so that means we're counting by... What are we counting by? 2 pi, pi over 6? So this is 3 pi over 6's. 1, 2, 3, 4. If this is 3 pi over 6's, this is 4 pi over 6's, 5 pi over 6's, 6 pi over 6's, 7 pi over 6's. Since it's a negative sine curve, we start with our phase shift, we go down, we go back, we go up, and then we go back to the midline. So when you draw it, it should look like whoosh, something like that. Okay. Again, that one's just a matter of can you count by fractions and can you account for your phase shift. So last couple problems. Oh, wait, we got a word problem. All right. So it says we got a pendulum swinging on the wall. Let me see if I can sketch this. I think it would help to sketch. So we've got a pendulum swing. If you guys don't know what a pendulum is, a pendulum swings back and forth back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like that from hanging from a rope. So this is definitely sinusoidal. Uh, we're starting at five, middle of the swing, that's five centimeters. Okay, so the middle is five. That means we've got a new midline here of five. Let me move it down a little bit. The new midline is five. So this is five. And if the closest it ever gets is three, three, then the furthest it's ever going to get is seven. Because if it's swinging back and forth, it's going two. Like if this is five centimeters, this is three centimeters. It's really close, but three centimeters. Um, and what else do we know? In one second, one second later, it's three centimeters. So one second later. That puts it starting here and then going down to here. So you can see how it's going to look like this. But that means we're counting by, I'll do it in yellow, uh, counting by ones. Two, three. Four. So then it's going to come back to the middle, it's going to swing away, and it's going to come back, and it's going to look something like, oh, that's terrible. Let's try better. Do better. It's going to look something like this. Okay. So how do we write the equation for that? Well, first of all, there's a midline of 5, so 5 plus. The amplitude is 2, and since it's upside down, I'm actually going to make this minus 2. We're doing a sine curve, but we need to figure out what the B value is. So normally it's 2 pi over um, 2 pi over this value will give you um, the period. And here the period is 4. I'm, I'm trying to do two things at once here. 2 pi over b is 4. So in this case you switch it, 2 pi over 4 would be b. So b is pi over 2. That means that our coefficient here is pi over 2. And it uses t, so I'll say t. So 5 minus minus 
two sine of pi over two t. There's no phase shift. We're starting at zero, but we're going down first, so it is upside down. Kind of tricky. Last two, we're going to graph some secant and cosecant. We have a vertical shift. I'm going to be a little lazy here and call that my new midline. And then one above that is zero, and one below that is negative two. What else do I got? Normally, it's two pi over b, so two pi over one third. When you copy, change, flip, you get six pi. So one, two, three, four. This is six pi, which means we're counting by three pi over two. So this is three pi over two. This is six pi over two. Six over two is three pi. Nine pi over two, 12 pi over two. 12 over two is six. Since it's cosecant, I'm gonna sketch it as being a sine curve. And since it's negative, it's upside down. So it would look like this if it were a sine function, but instead it's cosecant. So these all become asymptotes. You can't divide by zero. So all these end up being vertical asymptotes non um, infinite discontinuities. And then since it's uh, cosecant, these end up going away from the midline. So it looks like this, and it looks like this. Okay, it's upside down, which just means it goes away from the midline, but instead of a normal sine curve, it's upside down like that. It's flipped over the x-axis. Last one, we have a phase shift to the left, so I'm going to call this negative 2 pi. I'm not going to draw it actually as an It looks too much like an asymptote that way. This is negative 2 pi. And since there is no period change, the end of it will be 0. The period is 2 pi. So I know that I'm going to break this up into fourths. I'm counting by pi over 2s. So negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2. The amplitude, it's not really amplitude. It's a vertical dilation of 3. And then since it's secant, I'm going to sketch it as a cosine curve, and we'll just convert it to secant that way. So on a secant function, every time it hits the midline, vertical asymptote, just like secant, uh, cosecant, and then same game, it goes away from the midline. So like that, like this, and then like that. Okay. So we have graphed sine cosine. We have used the unit circle to help us analyze things. This is pretty much everything you need to know for your test. Good luck on the first unit test.